Hello. Oh, wait, my friends are there. Hello, everybody. Welcome. You know the drill. You know who it is. Now, this is just a quick video to discuss something that went down in the Cloud9 phase game. Obviously, phase won this one 16 8. Absolutely slapped some Cloud9 body on Nuke. You might think to yourself, well, okay, maybe you'd expect it to be closer, but you know, FaZe are a pretty good nuke team, best team in the world probably right now. Cloud9, uh, you know, they, they have these games, they kind of like look really good sometimes, and then sometimes their very standard way of playing CS will bite them in the butt, especially against the in-game leader like Paragon, right? Problem was, uh, when you look uh, at the Cloud9, this is the, uh, the map pool for the roster, right? S whole time they've been together so all like two and a half years thousand maps or whatever let's just let's just do it by by time let's have a look in uh, 2021 yep didn't play a single nuke how about 2020 also didn't play a single nuke how about 2019 i mean you know they only Hobbit wasn't with them anyway you get my point cow nine this roster do not play nuke this is the only time they have ever played nuke in an official game right so now you're probably thinking to yourselves, well, I mean, you know, Cloud9 decided to throw a bit of a curveball, wanted to do something a little bit different, wanted to... No, all right? Apparently, not true. So this tweet um, was released by Carrigan uh, pretty much immediately after the game. Uh, and as you can see here, they says that Cloud9 made a human error uh, in the veto by vetoing the wrong map. Um, human error, but a mistake, basically. Somebody fucked up, vetoed a map that they did not mean to veto. Yeah, bans couldn't be reversed. Carrigan obviously basically saying it sucks, but he wasn't going to take it to Ancient because he wouldn't have taken the game to Ancient. So basically Carrigan saying if there had been a gentlemanly option, he wouldn't have taken it for obvious reasons. Um, by the way, Carrigan not obliged at all to take any sort of gentlemanly option here. It's not his fault that Cloud9 made a mistake. Now, Carrigan goes on in another tweet to clarify and basically say the reason he thought it was a mistake is because Cloud9 five seconds later asked if they could change their ban. But then this interview happens just after the game with Hobbit. And I'll just play it out. You never play it. I mean, we played Don't it on practice hear, and uh, uh, we got some plan and, you know, we really wanted to try something new. <laughs> I mean, so as you can see there, Hobbit um, the month, has so said they had a plan, city side, not a, wanted to try something new, we, we had a plan specifically for CT, don't need to play the rest of the video, you get the gist. Now, um, there's a few things I think that need to be said about this. Um, first things first, I want to address the people who suggest... There's kind of two schools of thought, I think, on the people who are like in the Cloud9 camp almost, basically saying that Cloud9 should have been allowed to take back their veto. The first camp and the most kind of simplistic way to view it, I guess... Um, is them saying, oh, they realized straight away it was a mistake. They said straight away it was a mistake. They should be allowed to take back the veto. Um, obviously, this is dumb, right? It's stupid. It, you ju it's just not a workable solution. How do we know for certain that it was a mistake from Cloud9 and that this isn't some sort of mind game they were trying to play, trying to make FaZe, I don't know, nervous about what map they took it to? maybe by sort of fake banning nuke phase get nervous about where they were going to take the veto like i i don't know what advantage you might be looking to gain but there is definitely a world in which in-game leaders coaches would start mind gaming the veto if they were able to just take back a ban if they were able to go oh we ban overpass oh no wait sorry actually we changed your mind we ban nuke it's there is definitely a way you could gain an advantage in just seeing the reaction. You say, oh, we ban overpass. You look at Carrigan and see how he reacts to the idea that Nuke is going to be on the table. You know, if Carrigan looks really happy about it, then you go, oh, no, sorry, we didn't ban Nuke. And if Carrigan looks upset about it, you let it go through. Like, you know, obviously this is a hypothetical situation, but it's not hard to imagine a situation where letting teams just take back their VOs could be a problem. Also, too... It's just not in the interest of competitive integrity, right? Surely there need to be rules about the veto saying once you've locked the map in, that's it. It's locked in. You can't change it. 
just common sense to me, right? Because the vetoes have become fucking carnage if teams are allowed to just take their map back. You'd, you'd end up getting, like, veto by committee, right? Where teams would be like, oh, we're going to ban that. No, we're not. Actually, we're going to ban this. And then the other team goes, well, we'll ban this then. And it, it just becomes a fucking farce, right? So there's one camp. Sorry, allowing Cloud9 to just take it back, even if it was because they said in within, like, immediately that it was a mistake it doesn't matter not good enough you can't just let teams take back their veto with all due respect it's not fucking hard right like i have heard very few times of a mistake like this being made in the veto it's not hard to get right guys you know if there's one area of the fucking game don't make just a simple stupid mistake it's in the fucking veto don't do it the second camp, which is a little bit more nuanced, basically argues that admins should have asked FaZe. As admins should have said, hey FaZe, do you mind if Cloud9 take back their veto and redo it, whatever. Have we not already in Counter-Strike had enough bullshit around teams pressuring admins gamesman shipping fucking different rules and stuff to get little advantages delaying the start times of maps all of this fucking shit talking in pauses all of this fucking garbage right has gone down because admins have rolled over and let themselves get bullied by players i thought we were at a point in cs where we were largely past a lot of that right we were largely past all the bullshit gamesmanship that fucking players and the players do guys if you're one of those naive fuckers who sat there right now like no but my players they're so nice no they're little bastards who will do whatever it takes a lot of them to get a fucking advantage all right this is a competitive endeavor and a lot of them take this surprisingly very fucking seriously right they will, even if it's just a little, little thing like delaying the map a couple of minutes to psych the other opponents out, get in their heads a bit because they're sat at their PCs. Even if it's like, you know, like talking in a pause to get like a little bit of extra communication in that you wouldn't have otherwise got a chance for. Uh, talking in a tech pause, I mean, like there are so many little tiny ways, like even fucking dumb shit that used to get done on LAN where like people would look, uh, if you were dead, right, you would look at the other team's faces because you could see if they were flashbanged, because their face would go white, because their screen was going white. Little, little teeny tiny things. So don't fucking turn around and tell me that a pro won't do that for an advantage, because I know for a fact a lot of them would, right? So don't give me that naive bullshit, all right? It's not fucking Narnia out here, right? It's real life. People will be shitty to get a little teeny tiny advantage, right? So anyway, that weird fucking rant aside, um... The camp that says you should ask FaZe. What the fuck? Like, what the... What? Okay, one, how is that fair? Because FaZe might say, yes, you can redo the veto. A different team might have said no. So within the same tournament, the major, the most important fucking event of the year, you could get two different series where one team got to redo their veto and another team didn't. How is that fair? How is that fair? It's not. It's not fair. It's not consistent. It's fucking stupid, quite frankly, to ask teams who have a vested interest in the outcome of the games, asking teams about rule disputes, super fucking stupid. And you shouldn't let teams anywhere near decisions like that, where a rule is already laid down in stone, just follow the fucking rule, all right? So that's the first thing. First thing, it might be unfair. Second, like... It is the biggest and most important event of the year and you want teams deciding on rules that are taking part really just forget like fairness i.e each team might get treated differently just purely in terms of the competitive integrity of the event it's fucked the second you start asking teams like i know it sounds like the same point but it's actually slightly different because what i'm saying is a world in which all the teams say yes and allow the veto to get redone Okay, it's not my world where I want to live, but it, at least there is some sense of fairness to it. Even if the competitive integrity has maybe been hit slightly, and competitive integrity and fairness are different like words and concepts. They have different meanings, so don't tie the two together. 
my original point was on fairness i.e each team getting a level playing field this is more about just competitive integrity and how a, an event seems fucked from a competitive integrity standpoint if you're asking teams to decide on rules and rule changes right now some people might at this point point to the comparison the gentleman's agreement about the smoke bug that is a little bit different right there was not a rule in place for that smoke bug okay so whereas there are already rules on vetoes there isn't a rule around that smoke bug okay that's the first thing so that is again a different situation now actually pgl have been consistent across the two here pgl have said the smoke bug is allowed because there's no rule against it so pgl have actually done the right thing and they stuck to their fucking guns and i respect pgl both in this instance and the smoke bug instance i'll probably do a separate video on that on, and talk a little bit about it in fact now nah, let's fuck it let's include it in this video right so the smoke bug like i say it's different because there's already rules around vetoes and not around smoke bugs the second thing is the smoke bug is a v you're asking me to basically violate competitive integrity in order to fix this veto mistake that cloud9 made made right the smoke itself is already violating competitive integrity it just is using one smoke to cancel another smoke and get a gap it's a bug within the game. It's something that shouldn't be within the game based upon the rules that are already set out within the game, i.e. a smoke blocks your vision, another smoke on top of it, your vision should stay blocked, right? So even though it's a bug, and even though I think PGL are correct to say there's no rule against it, you can use it, in this instance, a gentleman's agreement between the players is the best of both worlds, right? PGL stick by their rule book. The players recognize that the smoke is kind of fucked and they shouldn't be able to use it and agree not to use it, right? So that's the best, I think, of both worlds. And like I say, the reason it is a different situation is because A, no rules on smoke exist. So it's kind of a bit of like a Wild West situation where it's a bit lawless. Two, I think PGL are right not to introduce a rule halfway through their tournament. Once the rule book is locked in, it has to stay locked in. Any oversights, you just have to shrug your shoulders and say, I'm sorry, but that's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes there will be oversights. And because they did that and stuck by their guns, any team by the rules could use the bug. So at least it's fair in that sense. All teams get access to the same bug. And then the final point, which, like I say, you end up getting the best of both worlds. The players recognize that the rules say anyone can use it, and they turn around and say, look, the underlying issue is that the smoke isn't really in line with the ideas, ideas and ideals of competitive integrity. Even if it's fair to let everyone use it, it's more competitively integral. I don't know. There's more integrity to it if we agree not to use it, right? Hopefully that tells you exactly why there is a difference between this veto issue and this smoke issue um if you can't see the differences i can't really help you i think it's pretty fucking obvious that they're different circumstances and situations and therefore different in fact there isn't really a different approach taken from pgl pgl have taken a very consistent approach in both um circumstances which i fully support the flip side of what i'm saying is obviously the players are reacting differently in one instance phase turned around and said no we're going to stick by the rule book and then obviously with the smoke instance they're deciding not to stick by the rule book and have a little gentleman's agreement hopefully you understand why they're different like i say if you don't then i can't fucking help you like mm. now the final thing i kind of want to say on this topic is i think the way that pgl have gone about this is exactly the right thing you have to have rules you have to be consistent in your application of them and you have to stick by them even if part way through um particularly with this smoke thing even if part way through the rules do seem a little bit maybe in an ideal world you'd adjust them you can't adjust the rules part way for a tournament okay it's just not good again for competitive integrity the tournament needs to stand on its own merits it needs to have its own isolated rule book that you can go and look to and understand exactly what conditions that tournament was played under the only realistic the only sensible the only reasonable approach for pgl to take was to stick to their rules in both instances which they did and i fully respect pgl for that they deserve a lot of credit their 
were always going to come under some flack from the community, probably in both instances, A, for not bringing a rule out for the smoke bug, and B, for not letting Cloud9 take their veto back. You just can't. Anarchy would fucking ensue in the veto. The veto would become a fucking minefield of ridiculous mind games, of ridiculous attempts to, like, if not outright break the rules, to bend them as much as possible for an advantage. And that's not what we want to see. We don't want to see a realm where gamesmanship is more important than actually being good at the fucking game. I don't want to see a world where, like, whoever can be the most devious in kind of playing around the rules is going to win. Fuck that noise. We don't want that. This is why the coaching bug was was hit so fucking hard and why everybody was kind of like in a lot of instances all for the coaching bug being hit so hard like a sport only exists and lasts and is successful as long as there is a clear defined set of rules and integrity around the competition humans we have a natural like tendency to want fairness and shit in our competition we just do it's like a natural human instinct and the more you take away from that the less people give a shit and are interested if you want our esport to thrive and survive in the long term this is the kind of straightforward authoritative consistent application of the rules that we need to see um whether you like it or not it's for the long-term health of the game guys so you know man the fuck up basically and don't mess up in the veto like uh, i still don't think per se cloud9 fucked up the veto in quite the way people are thinking i have a suspicion cloud9 were probably toying with the idea of floating nuke at some point in this major uh, and probably have worked on nuke behind the scenes if you had to ask me what i think went down i think nafany was like yeah ban nuke get rid of it groove was like ah guys let's not maybe use that fucking ace that trump card just yet and then they tried to change their mind about it that purely speculation right i've got no insight that would be in my brain if i was speculating and had to like put an answer that would be what i suggest happened that cloud nine were gonna float nuke at some point in the tournament did it a little bit earlier than maybe they had agreed to do it and there was some disagreement about whether they should that's all i had to say on the topic guys you know the drill drop me a like drop me a comment let me know if you want to see stuff in future vids and if you didn't like it you're a little fucking bitch who wants the teams to all like come together and hug and sing kumbaya and make the rules up themselves and you're dumb you're dumb and you're stupid